Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to talk about the new buffet, product solutions for guest safety and satisfaction. We have an amazing trio of panelists here today to share so much knowledge and information with us. Um, I can't wait to get into chatting, um, but before I do, I wanted to tell you that today's webinar is actually sponsored by some of the top manufacturers of the Buyer's Edge platform. One of the main factors that makes the Buyer's Edge platform brands the strongest GPO in food service, along with our technology, is the strength of our manufacturer contracts. The contracts that we have with the industry's top manufacturers, like these guys, are specially designed to provide rebates and savings on the products that matter most to the restaurant and food service operators. Our partners and clients, like many of you on today, have the benefit of utilizing these over 450 plus extensible contracts across so many categories. And we are so lucky to be able to tap into their knowledge and information, especially during these times. Um, so before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Today is being recorded and will be sent to you following, so you'll have access to everything you hear and see. Um, if you have any questions, and we hope you do, please use the question feature on your GoToWebinar screen. Um, if there's someone in particular you want to direct that at, just put their name. And then throughout the conversation, we're going to put a couple of cool things in the chat feature there, so keep your eyes on that. And then feel free to use that space to talk to each other. On this call today, we have a pretty wide spread of um, operators. So we have catering companies, restaurants, hotels, casinos, healthcare operations. Um, there's buffets in all of these spaces and so many brilliant minds on this call. So that is your space to chat and brainstorm together. And then lastly, check out that handout section. There's a couple of things from our panelists today in there that um, are worth viewing. Okay, so back to the topic and who we're chatting with. Um, first, we have Bethany Runyon Meadows, the Senior Manager, Channel and Customer Development of Tyson Food Service. Um, Bethany is bringing us her passion for food and hospitality and 12 years of Tyson experience from Arkansas. Um, she currently works focusing on the needs of the lodging operation, evaluating customer and industry trends and data, presenting solutions to enhance the customer's F&B programs. Um, Bethany has a pretty big background in hotel, F&B, catering, operations, marketing, and sales, so we're delighted to have her today. We've also got Andy Coos, the Customer Development Director in National Sales for Georgia Pacific. Um, Andy has been with them for about eight years, and he's coming from us to us from Dallas, Texas, um, but very familiar and experienced on both coasts. So Andy's focus is a lot on distribution and group purchasing organizations in the food service space. And thrilled to have you today. And last but definitely not least is Shane Law, the manager of channel commercialization of Smucker Away From Home. Shane is coming to us from Ohio, um, and it's really focused on the channel and customer development for the hospitality and commercial segments, and also has a great marketing background, so we're really lucky to gain his knowledge here today. So now that you know all of the brilliant minds here chatting with us today, um, I'd love to start by talking about where we're at in the world of buffets. Um, our operators and attendants, again, are hotels, catering, restaurants, healthcare, casinos, all of whom have had to make adjustments and changes to their buffet operations today. So, Bethany, having a lot of experience working with the food service operators and in the industry, what can you tell us about what you're seeing on new solutions around buffets? Yeah, and I don't think the self serve buffet is dead. It's just really being reimagined. Of course, we know barriers, masks, gloves, distancing, like that's all definitely standard. But past that, we're really seeing operators think creatively and not take a one size fits all approach across the board. Operators are looking at their specific needs, or at least the ones I'm working with, to say, you know, what labor do I have? What does my occupancy look like? What does my velocity look like? To develop a plan for the for their specific operations. 
I've worked with some operators that have made that move to individually wrapped um, options. Our Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwich is a, is a great example in that space. Operators are able to slack out the sandwiches um, as they're needed, and then they can either heat them and serve them um, or keep them cold uh, and have the uh, customer heat it themselves. Um, and it, this is a great way to be flexible um, because you're really cutting down on waste if you may not know how many people you're gonna be serving that day. Um, if you do serve it cold and allow them um, to heat it themselves, um, and you're not creating a bunch of sandwiches back of house that may go to waste. Mm. Outside of breakfast, um, we're seeing, uh, you know, operators create individually plated or packaged items back of house. And they're really tailoring that menu specific to what's going to work in this, in this new world. Um, I talked to uh, one operator that um, he's really focused on creating options that are served uh, uh, room temp or cold. So that as they're putting that dome um, on, you know, the individually uh, packaged or wrapped item, um, that it's still performing really well uh, once the customer starts eating that. And they really approached their plan from the way that they would for a traditional HACCP uh, plan and just working through each menu item to say how many touch points are here. Um, and how can we mitigate um, each of those touch points? Um, and if it's too many and it's not worth mitigating, um, they're taking it off their menu. And, and consumers are accepting of all these kind of different strategies, prepackaged, uh, smaller menus, focused menus. So that's kind of what, what I've been seeing so far. That's awesome. Yeah, we as consumers just want to eat. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I just shared something here in the chat feature for everybody. This is a fantastic resource. Tyson shared this um, with us. It's from a luxury hotel operator. I think it's really worth watching this. Um, it's talking, it's perspective from a chef in that luxury unit that the team is not tapping into their usual brilliant cuisine minds and how they're keeping each other inspired. And I just think it's a beautiful smart video to watch. So Bethany, did you want to add anything to that? Well, this is a video that was created a, as a part of the Mies Lodging Conference that we've been involved in. And, and when you see the video, um, the chef talks about just what you said. The, the staff was previously working with these specialized products and Wagyu beef and, and that type of thing. And now uh, it, it's just a different atmosphere. and um, you know, he still said that his focus is making the best uh, food that he can, even though that may be a grab and go item now, or even though that may be a pizza now instead of Wagyu beef. Um, and really focusing his staff on a new way to be creative, um, but maybe with some more traditional ingredients. So I thought it was a really good call out from him. Yeah, I love that. Um, Andy, at the end of the day, our operators are in the hospitality business, and that comes with some standards and expectations from consumers. So the need to balance some of the COVID precautions and changes while also making sure that guest experience is enjoyable is a hard line to sort of balance. Do you have any product or method recommendations that can help operators really elevate that customer experience right now? Absolutely. And first off, Jillian and Byers Edge, thank you for having me and Georgia Pacific on this. Um, so premiumization is, is key and paramount during this time. And, and I kind of look at it from two different directions, one from the product focus and the other from the process focus. So from a product focus, um, you know, consumers, at least in our space with disposables, they tend to carry that product away from the premises and it stays with them for quite a little bit of time. So investing in something that is premium uh, really kind of helps them throughout the day as they're drinking their, their coffee throughout the morning to remember back to that experience uh, at the buffet. So one product that, that came to mind here is our uh, Perfect Touch Cup. You can see here on the screen that 
uh, a great solution um, for folks that are not wanting to use foam. It's a very sustainable solution. It really elevates, um, you know, a beverage experience. Another value add here with this particular uh, product is you don't have to use a sleeve. So a lot of uh, a lot of times when we're talking to operators, you're having to manage the inventory on two different SKUs, right? So the the cups and the sleeves. But this is essentially a two in one. Um, and then the other component of this, I was mentioning the process is really showing customers, you know, that uh, that you have the sanitation or their uh, hygiene in mind in the products that you're using. So a couple of the items that we do have, um, you know, coming as a result of, of the COVID influence are some wrapped disposable items. So you can see here on the screen that we have a whole portfolio of wrapped perfect touch cups to give that premium uh, cup, but also in a little bit more of a consumer friendly um, and hygienic format. And then we also have the plates, as you can see here. So as folks are going through a breakfast uh, buffet or, or buffet of any sort, you know, they have the ability to know that I'm the first person to use this or to touch this product. Um, and this has really been a very impactful product line for us so far in COVID. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Bethany or Shane, was there anything you wanted to add to that? I had a couple of things that, that came to mind on this um, that, you know, when I've been talking to operators, they're really evaluating where to use their labor. We know that it's an issue and it's even more of an issue now with COVID. And so how do they use that labor to maximize the customer experience? And so this is where we're really suggesting our ingredient meat line, where we have chicken and beef and some pork items so that they can use something that is fully cooked and ready for them to customize, but they're not spending their time cooking raw meat, uh, having that sanitation uh, issue on top of everything else um, and, and get credit for what they're doing. So they can spend time uh, creating an amazing flavored dish instead or creating something that um, a consumer couldn't do at home. With everyone cooking more at home now, when, when they're eating away from home, they're looking for something that they can't necessarily do very easily themselves anymore. And so I think it's good to maximize that labor uh, where it's gonna create that experience, like you said. Um, and so we're also seeing that, you know, a fully cooked protein can, uh, can be a really great option at a chef station as mm -hmm. well. Um, where that chef can easily put together all the fully cooked um, components right in front of the customer. So you're still limiting those touch points, but you're, you're getting that nice visual engagement with the customer to bring, again, that experience and that hospitality feel um, with, again, controlling safety and sanitation. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'll jump in and uh, kind of add some of the great content that uh, the thoughts that Andy and Bethany have shared. And again, as, as Andy said, first of all, thank you to Buyer's Edge Platform for the partnership and for the honor of, of letting Smucker Away From Home participate today. Yeah, I think everything that's been said is spot on. We recognize that the first priority for all these operations is is the safety of their, their guests, um, their staff members, and offering having solutions that are labor friendly. I mean, the first priority should be the um, the safety and the uh, satisfaction of, of their guests. So anything that detracts from that is um, is not helping the cause. So for, for us, when you think about the Smucker Away From Home portfolio, we have two, um, really our two most notable product categories are are our portion control food category, uh, as well as our uh, coffee uh, category or portfolio. And for the portion control, <clears throat> we're very well suited for a labor-friendly solution because there's no prep involved. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're already sealed and sanitary. <clears throat> so there's peace of mind, uh, and they're very easy to pair with products without any, uh, without any labor or prep required. I think for us, you know, the other thing we would we would drive home is that unlike a lot of the competitive products in our space, 
um, we take traceability and uh, transparency to, to a very high level. We've, we've been very dedicated to that at Smuckers for some time. So every one of our products is fully coded on the product. So it, it does give an added level of security and transparency that if there are any concerns, it can be traced really all the way back to the source. Uh, in most instances, you'll see that kind of coding on a, on a master case, <clears throat> but you won't see it all the way down to the product level. So we're very, very dedicated to safety and offering solutions that are very turnkey for operators as they, we've seen a lot of move from bulk to portion control in our category. Um, in uh, hospitality, breakfast syrup is a great example. That was a product that was very commonly a self-help open format type of execution. And we've seen a move to portion control, which makes so much sense for safety and for, for kind of staff labor friendliness. Yeah. Absolutely, thank you. Um, Andy, keeping with that safety as a top priority theme that's on everybody's mind, um, can you talk a little bit more about how to manage those safety concerns around buffets and any common setups or changes that are happening, um, and if you expect that can, to continue through 2021? Yeah, so to answer your question, yes, I, I believe it will continue into 2021. And uh, a few things that we've seen, 72% of people say that a single-use disposable actually makes them feel safer uh, in a restaurant or an eating establishment. So we have a great new product out. It's our Smart Stock cutlery system um, that is a wrapped dispensed cutlery. It is wrapped just on the top end. We call it the business end, just where you're, you're eating. Um, but it ensures that, again, back to what I was saying earlier with the wrapped cups and plates, that you're the first person to touch um, your utensil. So we've seen this become a huge, tremendous success through uh, this COVID period as people are starting to shift away from the bulk bins or, um, you know, reusable silverware. And then the other element of this, too, and kind of building on Shane's point around portion control is, you know, when you have open source bins, A, it's not as hygienic because people are touching it. but People tend to maybe take a little bit more than they than they actually need. Um, so this really helps pare down on on giving people really what they need um, and saving some money in the long run. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I can say from personal experience, this is the one area when I go to do like a to-go food and the basket of loose silverware is still there that I'm like, mm, that goes direct hand to mouth. That one's mm -hmm. a little tricky. So this is a really awesome solution for that. Um, so, you know, in addition to our operators really wanting to make sure what they do in their spaces is safe for their employees and their guests, our operators are also trying to make sure that the items they procure are coming in safely to them. Um, Shane, you touched upon this a little bit, but do you want to talk a little bit more about what Smucker Away From Home puts in, um, into their supply chain? I know you guys put a lot of emphasis on this. Yeah, I mean, again, as I mentioned, you know, for us, we we have a number of we have extensive protocols in place that allow us in you know traceability of our products to be able to get you know basically by looking at the product we have, you we can determine exactly the time a product was made, the facility, right down to the product line, and then ultimately by looking at sort of the batch sheets, we can actually see the source pretty much back to the farmer in most instances on the food side of the business where product came from. So uh, we feel like we, we're, we're very um, particular about being able to, to have a very tight grasp on the supply chain um, and all the way, you know, all the way through to the finished good, that sort of farm to table story and for safety. So that is definitely something on the food side of the business. I would say too, if we're talking about safety, I talked a little bit about food, but one of our really important coffee uh, solutions is the select brew system, which is has always had its place. So the select brew system is, is basically pre-brewed coffee that is brewed under optimal conditions, frozen, and then there's basically no brewing for the operator. That's always been a very, uh, very uh, favorable option in non-commercial in particular, but now that's even more the case because you basically have nothing open. There's no product ever exposed um, to contact in any way 
It's served at the touch of a button. It's literally a one tough touch option. And we've even created protocols that we'll share with our partners on how you can eliminate or greatly reduce even that touch. But the beauty is too, is the equipment, it has all touch in place or clean in place technology. So it's extremely easy, it's fast, it's efficient, uh, it requires effectively no training. Every piece of equipment has the information right in the inside of the door. Um, so we can control the temperature very specifically of the product to make sure anything that would be bad is killed, but that nobody gets hurt in the service. So both kind of the food portfolio and the coffee portfolios have been optimized really for safety. That's fantastic, thank you. Sounds like a very impressive coffee mechanism. Um, so with guest traffic being kind of a wild card, a lot of new expenses of hygiene and safety um, that our operators are now needing to add on really add up. So Andy, what can you talk about that might help with a little bit of margin support here? Any products you can recommend? Absolutely. So I think to start off with, we've seen a lot of operators really focus on what I was saying earlier around controlling consumption. And that seems to be a good gateway to increasing their margin. So whereas, um, you know, people may not be taking a stack of napkins and they only need one or two for what they're going to use it for, right? So they're not throwing away as much product. Um, a particular solution, as you can see on the screen here, is a uh, smart stock Dixie Ultra napkin machine. Essentially what it is is a pre-portion uh, dispenser that uh, you, know, you can set as an operator how many napkins you would like to dispense and patron comes by, grabs what they need and continues walking on. So no more pinching and grabbing your, your stack of napkins, using one and throw them away. Um, operators can actually realize those savings by giving customers what they need versus free reign over the product. Very cool. Thank you. No, I, if I can jump in and just share an observation, uh, this is really exciting to me. You know, I, I've certainly seen solutions like those that Andy is sharing in the Dixie lineup with low, no touch dispense. And um, it's sort of timely actually, shortly after this webinar, I'll be, I have a touch base with Data Central who has commissioned uh, some uh, proprietary research on our behalf to look at innovation possibilities for forward thinking dispensing of our portion control products that would be a low or no touch solution so i think you know what we see a lot of uh, is innovation as we all think about what the new world looks like i think a lot of us you know we're certainly caught off guard by what the implications of covid would be for the industry uh, but I think it's it's encouraging to see the solutions that are in place and that we, as all partners in this, are rallying to to solve for. So for us, you know, we have very, you know, we have kind of historically a kind of an open buffet self-help kind of a model for our products. And we recognize that doesn't look like help anymore. So we're looking, you know, very quickly at what, how can we change that and support our partners, our operator partners, with safe, sanitary ways to provide these products that optimize the guest experience, but also are labor friendly and maintain those safety protocols. So uh, that's something we're working on. Hopefully we'll have a solution soon, uh, but it was, it's exciting for me to see what Andy's been sharing and just react to how Smuckers is doing that and how we're pursuing new solutions as well. That's awesome. Yeah, it is really an amazing feat how everything is moving so fast to keep up with the way of the world, which I think is a really hopeful thing for operators that it might be a little sticky right now, but solutions are happening fast for them. Um, I'd love to ask all of you this question. You, you know, a lot of the hotel operators that had breakfast buffets um, are kind of focusing heavy on their hotel marketplace or sundries as another area for them to provide food for their hotel guests it can be a little easier for social distancing or just kind of pausing their restaurants altogether. do you guys have any solutions that can really help amp up those marketplaces during this time to get more substantial items um bethany we can start with you 
Yeah, so the first product um, line that came to mind when you said that is our extensive line of individually wrapped sandwiches. Um, so we have deli sandwiches as well as sandwiches that can be um, heated uh, by the consumer, like hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, even a yummy, yummy grilled cheese. I mean, how can you go wrong with grilled cheese? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the great thing about these sandwiches is that they're designed to be shipped frozen and then slacked out um, when needed. So providing that extended shelf life, um, I think is really important to help that operator you know, reduce waste and also be easily able to pivot um, as they, uh, uh, you know, see their occupancy go up or down or velocities in some other um, operators. So um, I think that's a really uh, great solution in this space to be able to provide, like you said, those more substantial items um, in place of a restaurant or a, a breakfast buffet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Shane, did you want to add something there? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really interesting to me. I mean, marketplaces and pantries uh, have been a, were sort of a growing trend already, even pre-COVID, given the fact that um, meals aren't as traditional as they once were, snacking behavior is up, people looking for food solutions in between traditional meal times and seeking convenience. And so, for us at Smuckers, the snacking platform has actually been a strategic priority for the entire company, uh, even on the retail side of the business. And uh, fortunately, you know, some of the products that are on the Buyer's Edge platform uh, that are approved under Smucker away from home, the Jif peanut butter portion comes in a variety of portion sizes. This isn't a, a phenomenal um, protein packed, fully sealed solution that can be quick paired with a number of items easily thinking bag pretzels or pre-cut fruit, et cetera. We definitely have seen one of the first things we were asked for in marketing that sales came to us very quickly for is they said, we need help to help our operators understand what we have that can be very quickly assembled, if you will, in mm -hmm. containers, um, basically that quick assembly meal. So we created a, a grab and go solutions sort of sell sheet immediately to say these are what this is what's in our portfolio here's how easy it is to execute uh so jif is portion control is a great item that can plug in very easily and then our sahali snacks are the same uh sort of high-end gourmet premium nut and fruit blends that are sort of ready to go um mm -hmm. that satiate and are filling so we have some solutions and i think we, we will see the continuation of pantries and marketplaces the relevance they play in food service and uh, uh we can appreciate that that's going to continue to trend absolutely um andy did you want to add anything to that yeah, absolutely. So from our away from home business, we don't have a lot of retail ready packaging, but I think where we can add value in the marketplaces is really around the cleanliness of things. So we have a new system out, um, as you see here on the screen, some sanitizers that can be placed around, but we also have a system out that helps uh, disinfect areas. It's our Dixie Ultra surface system wiper bucket. And essentially what it is, is it allows uh, your quat solution that's inside your normal cleaning bucket to not be diluted when a natural cloth is put into it. So um, that would be one thing I would encourage you to consider is, you know, definitely wiping down the touch points, having the, um, the sanitizer stands ready as people are starting to touch and interact with those marketplaces. And then the other element of this too is Georgia Pacific uh, has a promotion running through the end of the year where we're offering no charge distancing dots. So I think that's definitely key as you're, you're having um, kind of a confined area of the market, uh, marketplace, uh, making sure that people are still social distancing as they're looking through and making their selection. That's awesome, yeah. I'm actually really excited about the idea that these marketplaces are gonna continue to grow in the normal mm -hmm. world. My focus is live events. So I spend a lot of time in hotels, never able to sit down for a meal. So whatever is in that market is what I'm eating. And sometimes it's only Twizzlers. So I'm really excited for the idea that they're gonna grow cheeses and some other great nutritious food in there. Um, so kind of similarly, hotel operations are also leaning a little heavier and differently in their in-room dining as um, offsetting some of their standard buffet traffic right now. 
Um, do you guys want to share any thoughts on how um, hotels can kind of deliver those products and manage mobility, temperature, sanitation in that area? And very similarly for takeout, how restaurants are kind of doing that. Any sort of best practices and tips that you want to share? Bethany, we can start with you. Yeah, and we uh, recently looked at a, a data essential survey that was talking about, um, you know, how consumers, where they feel safe uh, in a, the lodging environment, eating. And the top one that they identified is in-room services, whether that's, uh, you know, snacks in the room or getting um, room service. So, Concentrating on this is definitely um, a way to satisfy uh, your guests. Um, and they're definitely open to more of a non-traditional room service model, which I know is starting to gain some traction before COVID, um, but definitely with restaurant delivery, um, you know, really uh, starting to grow, taking more of that drop off delivery approach rather than you know a traditional room service uh, model is is definitely something that um, customers are looking for um, yeah. and they can you know cu customers continue to say that after covid they anticipate continuing to order delivery so this is the time to work on your model work on best practices and how to do it because we think this will be um, long lasting, not just um, because of COVID. Um, but, you know, we're seeing operators start to pare down um, their delivery or room service menus in the restaurant space as well as lodging to make sure that they have the items that have the widest appeal, are easy to um, put together with limited labor, and will hold up in um, some of those not so great conditions of putting them in the packaging and and sitting there for a little while and so again consumers are okay with that if you pare down that menu um uh that it's more important that they have the options and they're getting a good quality food um mm -hmm. than a lot of options and so because of this tyson has specifically tested our red label chicken line um, in this type of environment, in to-go containers, sitting there to make sure that it can deliver, stay, um, you know, at temp, um, as well as deliver deliver a good eating experience, and it passed all of those tests. So that's something that, um, from a product standpoint, um, that I definitely uh, recommend and. And that line of products is really those tried and true forms of chicken that everybody loves. Breaded fillets, tenders, there's some ingredient um, strips in there, those types of things. So it, it's a really good all encompassing line that you know is gonna be able to uh, deliver that right eating experience. Awesome, thank you. I'm literally salivating. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. Grilled cheeses and all these great things. Yes. So, um, Andy, did you want to add anything there since they can't eat paper and utensils? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when we think of mobility, I think about it in two ways. One, you know, the food integrity, and then the other, the tamper resistant slash tamper proof. So from a food integrity standpoint, you know, it can go out of a kitchen looking great, but the experience is when it's been delivered to a customer, right? And they're the ones eating it. Um, so it's it's imperative that you have the right uh, wraps, the right packaging, things to make sure that, that that product is traveling well to a customer. Um, I'll start here with the tamper resistant. So Georgia Pacific launched a new product earlier this year called our uh, auto sealing machine. And essentially what it is, is a uh, heat sealing machine that lids cups anywhere from eight ounces to 44 ounces. So it provides a spill resistant seal as you see here on the screen. But it also gives customers that peace of mind that uh, not that anybody would tamper with it, right? But just, you know, that it it is, they're the first person to, you know, touch that cup, right? Yeah. Um, so we've seen this become, uh, you know, really uh, an interesting item, uh, specifically in 
the mobility space. And then additionally is our food wrap, which is a new item that we have coming out. So this is kind of a two-in-one food wrap. One, that it uh, is grease resistant, so it doesn't have the leakage and spillage um, that could occur in some wraps. But additionally, it also has a heat retention mechanism. So it ensures that, that food is staying warm as it's traveling. And then for those that are looking for a, a green item, it is compostable, BPI compostable certified. So it does have that uh, you know, environmental friendly element to it as well. That's awesome. That first product that you showed would be a fantastic thing for some of these cocktail to goes that are happening. Absolutely, absolutely. And it has a straw perforation on it too. So you wanna serve a straw with it, it's as simple as popping it in. Um, but it is a single use so somebody would take the lid off and consume the beverage that way. And is there a specific cup you said that had to go with that or you can just use your own cup? So good question. Anything with a brim. So it can be a paper or a plastic cup. Um, it hasn't worked on foam, but anything that has a brim to allow that heat uh, shrinking material, the poly okay. material to adhere to something. Um, but anything with a brim uh, sizes eight ounce to 44 ounces. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, we had some fun questions that have come in here during this session that I, I want to ask you guys. One of them is, um, this one says, my international um, regions cover Asia, the Pacific, and Europe. Any international trends or information that any of you have would be awesome to hear. They're kind of doing the same thing that um, we're seeing in the United States as far as buffets and things. I'll be honest, if I can just speak for myself and say that, you know, my my personal focus is the United States in terms of the insights that I most I have most readily available. I think from what we're seeing, the same really challenges and concerns, I have to believe, are quite universal. Uh, the safety of guests, the challenge around labor, um, the fact that, you know, the bottom line is everybody's trying to do more with less, uh, working in a more complex environment than ever uh having to prioritize the safe everyone's safety first and foremost um and do it with fewer resources so i think i think i would say that probably what we're sharing i believe is pretty universal i wish i could share some specific international insights but um i believe that the topic is is pretty far reaching in terms of the implications of covid yeah for sure and i think talked about before we began all of us are in different states and things are so different state to state we of course the covid problem is worldwide but everyone's regulations are just so different it, it's a lot to keep up with yeah one thing i wanted to make sure i i, I plug it's a little bit self-interesting self-serving but but i think it's it's very true and genuine is you know one thing that's a little unique about our product portfolio and our position uh, unlike many of our peers and other other categories is that our brands are customer facing our consumer facing our guest facing and one of the things that we've we've heard uh, it's a very recurring theme in all of the ins insights and the research we've we've done and seen is that with so much uncertainty and and so so much confidence shaken in so many ways things that instill confidence and trust and sort of are reinforcing comfort are more desired than ever. And so for, for us, we would just sort of point out that, you know, your portion control condiments and other cues that people are comfortable with and convey confidence and safety and reassurance, now's the time to really do that and double down. Um, we recognize cost controls are more important than ever and difficult decisions have to be made. Uh, we would submit and would assert that based on all findings everywhere, um, do cutting in these areas, what you see in front of you, particularly on the top, is really not the wise place to do it because it it creates second guessing around other protocols. In other words, if, 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 if I'm going for an off-brand, an off-label, a house product or something of that nature, what, what other things are, are maybe being shortcut? Um, so again, um, I would submit that this is a really good time to instill confidence and trust with your guests and serve lead leading brands, at least to the extent that, that they're seen. 
Yeah, we see, you know, similar research uh, that uh, customers feel confident in the brands that they see at the grocery store um, mm -hmm. as well. And they're familiar with those. And so they have the confidence now in these kind of, you know, trying times uh, that, you know, that is a safe uh, product that I recognize and that can be uh, valuable. That's such a great point. Um, this next question that came through um, is, how can you ensure that people are not congregating in those common areas of buffets? And are there any systems in place that you might know that they can kind of work to avoid some of that conjugation? I'm not aware of, you know, any necessarily specific products out there. There may be, I'm just not aware of them, but some of what I've been seeing of operators are doing is, is you know, really having markers on the floor, even around the buffet of this is, you know, where you can stand and and doing the social distancing and, and reinforcing that or making sure that people um, are following that. Uh, so that they aren't congregating um, around there, like you said. Same yeah. thing in a bar area, just really making it clear uh, with the floor decals and all of that of, of where you expect people to stand so that they're not congregating. And then I've also seen um, where, um, you know, sometimes uh, they've uh, staggered uh when people are going to be arriving to events and that type of thing um to be able to control the crowd a little bit um as well so those are kind of uh not specific products but just uh things that i've seen um out there yeah awesome yeah I, they feel like people are being very innovative i just heard this morning of an operator that's working on doing live streaming of food stations so they'll have kind of cameras taking showcasing all the different foods and you'll check off what looks delicious from your table and then a server will bring that to you so um definitely all kinds of crazy amazing options out there i also yeah, I saw where uh, everybody was um seated and they actually uh brought a cart around um, so that you know nobody was getting too close to each other and they were moving the cart around to to provide the the food and beverage and so I'll, the only person that was touching it was the the worker that was serving it out so i've seen that yeah. as well yeah yeah I, th I think i think you know that, that's bethany hit on so many protocols um procedures that are happening that make sense and and can ensure everyone's safety and I think I think it's really cool uh, what Andy mentioned that Georgia Pacific is offering their customers with sort of the safety and the spacing dots is speaks perfectly to the to the question that was asked and um, you know thorough signage reinforcing social distancing uh, hand sanitization made available in, in all the key places being important you know one thing we haven't really talked about and I know the topic here is 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 really focused on the buffet. But the truth is, as it relates to food service and breakfast service in hospitality, you know, a number of folks have even moved to sort of bagged to go executions that can be taken back to the room. I know Bethany touched on on, uh, you know, people being more interested in dining in the room. That is definitely a trend that we see. So I feel like, you know, there are there are a lot of procedures that can be borrowed from what restaurants are doing block you know eliminating reducing seating so that it doesn't encourage close proximity the spacing mandates in queues and lines for the buffet but also thinking about uh about providing solutions that are that are friendly for guests to take things away and to take back to their room where they may be more comfortable uh whether that is pre-made quick prep meals grab and go or whether it's just offering you know that kind of friendly packaging at the buffet that could be taken taken away yeah um you know th this next question isn't necessarily product focused either but um it is a little obviously none of us know the future so i'll frame it as that but i think it's worth kind of chatting out here um 
as a lot of the solutions here are very are going to be costly and the things that an operator has to do do you guys think that the buffet model is a, is going to be sustainable long term for an operator and again we're not we can't predict the future but Bethany we can start with if you have any thoughts on that I think um I think for the foreseeable future, um, the the self serve bulk buffet model um, is is um, not going to satisfy guests or customers. Um, and so I, you know, I think there's the opportunity to to serve out that type of thing. But um, I know, you know, again, that's costly. Uh, with labor. So I think when you're thinking of solutions, like I said, think creatively. Don't think you have to be tied to how uh, food service has done it traditionally, whether you're in lodging or some other um, type of operation. This is truly the time to really evaluate uh, your model um, mm -hmm. because I think, you know, like I said, for the semi in between short term and long term, uh, you know, the the self serve bulk buffet is is not going to be accepted. I would agree with that and what Bethany said. I think it's going to be a bit of a hybrid buffet, a new buffet model, right? In the fact that you know you're you're really going to have to uh, ensure that people know and perceive the hygiene that's gone into preparing buffet area, right? So if they don't understand that this has been thoroughly sanitized or that my utensils are wrapped and I'm the first person to use it or, you know, things along those lines, um, I think it's going to be imperative moving forward. And then mm -hmm. what Bethany was saying earlier, it's making sure that the social distancing is in place. Um, but in the immediate future, I would agree with Bethany that it's, it's going to continue to be more of a self-service model. Yeah. Um, and th this question kind of appears with that, but do you think that operators should consider limiting, even if they are doing staff model buffets right now, should they limit what their buffet traditionally was? Yes, I think so. I think, uh, and we're seeing that a lot when I talk to operators, just because they, you know, they don't have the labor to do everything and mm -hmm. to serve out something and, you know, to make sure people are social distancing. So I think where customers are willing to kind of give and be okay with is, you know, it's not this huge extensive breakfast buffet with a lot of different offerings on it. It's a pared down version, but well done and the consumer feels very safe um, about uh, eating and the offerings. That's that's the important piece. So I would I would definitely recommend paring down so that you can do the other stuff, uh, the serving, the the sanitation, uh, making sure the the food you are serving is is the right temp and all of that. Do that very well. Yeah, I would agree with everything Bethany and Andy have said. Uh, I mean, I don't think anything will ever fully return to, I, I think we'll be once bitten, twice shy uh, a little bit and, and hyper vigilant about safety and sanit sanitization. I don't know if the social distancing, I mean, look, we, 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 we need these vaccines we keep hearing so much about, right? I mean, that's what needs to happen first. And it is difficult to predict the future. I can speak very specifically. I mentioned the research we're doing, and I was just looking at the results. And again, I'll be speaking right after this call with Data Central directly for their interpretation. But we did see a, okay, think about now COVID is over. Over meaning we've been vaccinated. We, we feel like it's under control, but we're, but we're living in the aftermath. And we, we showed them a variety of different ways that they could access our products. And even after COVID, the kind of open, think about getting products out of a bowl, as an example, uh, as opposed to a gravity feed system that's fully contained, entirely closed, where only one product can be pulled out. And the thinking being that at least this item can easily be kept sanitary. 
uh, okay. but you don't have a sort of a full grab, free for all grab type thing. And even in the consumers reaction, 1500 consumers polled still showed a preference post COVID for that more sanitary vigilant dispense method. So I, 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 I can extrapolate to some degree and see that tells us a little bit about what the thought process will be beyond. So I, I think the old buffet self-help, very extensive, is probably going to be a challenge model. I think that simplifying it to a degree and having some level of staffing is probably going to be the expectation to man to to um, execute a buffet type of a setup. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that would translate into let's say a wedding or something for catering um, that really relies upon a buffet because doing like a 350 person plated meal is not always feasible on time. Um, I, I This last question I'd love to ask each of you, um, is there one solution, tip, piece of advice or thing that you've seen um, that is great or something that you want to tell everybody here to avoid um, from an operator product perspective? What kind of a, a leaving moment for everybody? Bethany, let's start with you. Well, I think, you know, um, I think operators are doing an amazing job uh, with finding ways to pivot in this environment. I've, I've just been overwhelmed by the creativity and the perseverance um, of the industry. But I, I know it's, it's hard to rethink kind of your whole model and, and everything that you're, you're doing. So I would just encourage them to continue to think um, outside the box. Like we said, we don't think we're ever going to go back to exactly how it was pre-COVID. So uh, I think just continue to think of, um, you know, non-traditional uh, ways to service your customer and those that will have the most impact um, on their satisfaction, where they will see it the most. Um, and then I would also say the, the pantry area, the grab and go area, that was growing um, to begin with. Um, and I think this just continues to feed that. And so I think really looking at that uh, area and coming up with, you know, the right product mix in there of um, substantial items, snack items um, can really help you drive satisfaction. Thank you for that. Um, Shane? I don't know if I could have stated it any better than Bethany just did. I think she really hit on the high points. I do. I think that I think that 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 uh, the the snack items, relying on the pantry, on food solutions that can be quickly assembled that don't involve extensive preparation for staff or something to lean on. Um, again, I'll, I'll double down on the point that you know leverage cues that reinforce a sense of confidence um, and trust with your guests and you know leading brands do that um, i recognize we're here to talk about our brands but um, it's been proven and proven again uh, that these are the kinds of things that reinstill confidence and confidence is needed now more than ever so those are not areas to to kind of cut corners um, i think those are really the keys uh, it's going to be challenging moving forward, and I feel the hospitality segment in particular has just has really taken it on the chin more than any. Uh, so it's going to be a slow recovery. Lean on your operators. Uh, be grateful that you are uh, Buyer's Edge platform members that are bringing you resources like this. Um, and um, you know, if there's anything more we we can do to help, that's what we're here for as partners of Buyer's Edge, and and ultimately as as your partner. That's awesome. Thank you, Shane. Andy, did you want to throw in something to the mix? Sure. Yeah, so uh, my parting thoughts would be, one, to make investments in hygiene, and then two, make sure that you're taking credit for those investments in hygiene. A lot of times, at least in the cleaning side of things, people don't necessarily see what goes on behind the scenes, but 85% of people say that they will not return to an establishment 
if it doesn't have good hygiene practices. So a lot of people may be going into somewhere not understanding what's being done, but if it's not perceived that way, they're not going to come back. So make sure you take credit for the hygiene investments that you're making, whether that's on social media, um, something uh, throughout your, your establishment. I know that there's a large lodging chain out there now that has a seal on their door to let you know that no one has been in or out um, before you. So make sure that you're definitely outwardly portraying and advertising um, what you're doing from a hygiene and a cleaning perspective. That's such a great point. Thank you. I, I can say that I feel that way, that when I go into a restaurant, I really love seeing, especially when they put on the table, this was just sanitized and they even write what the product mm -hmm. was. I love that. 